morning. Hi there. I'm Andrew. Hi, Pleased to meet you. Hi. How are you doing? Would you like to put some gloves on first of all? You shouldn't get too messy. I usually do, but we'll uh, see how we go. What we're going to do, we're going to make some moulded chocolate. So the first thing we need to do is to start off with the quantity of chocolate that's been melted and been tempered. And we buy our chocolate by the ton in small bags like this. And it comes to us in the form of these little drops of callets. So these are already tempered. Now these actually contain 31% cocoa butter, so there's no vegetable fat in this. It's a very nice quality chocolate. We've melted it, I've melted it already. Uh, it's kept melted overnight. And then we actually bring down the temperature and we add callets to it. The temperature drops and we actually seed it with more cocoa butter because when we're tempering chocolates we need to stabilize it so that we have really good qualities of snap contraction and gloss because otherwise you won't get a chocolate that comes out of the mold. What we're actually looking for, I'll we'll show you one of these that we've made in true blue Peter fashion, what we should end up with is a chocolate that just comes out of the mold like that. So nice and shiny, you can see we've got good contraction in the mold and nothing left and a nice crisp snap. Now if the chocolate wasn't tempered there's no way that would come out. Okay. So, so then you can get it out very easy. Yes, it will just, it will just, you flex the mould and turn them out and they should just all come out, which I hopefully I'll be able to show you in just a minute. So first of all, I've got my, my chocolate here. All I'm going to do first of all is warm the mould. Now you'll notice that these moulds, they've got chocolate on the outside, but there's nothing on the inside. What there is in there though is a very fine layer of cocoa butter because these have been moulded a few times before and they're a little bit like a, a black iron frying pan, pan or something similar. What happens is we actually um, melt that layer of cocoa butter and it gives us more and more of a surface all the time. So all I'm going to do is to warm the mould first of all and by warming the mould we soften the cocoa butter because it's quite cold outside this morning as well. We don't want to shock cool the chocolate. What we want to do is to pour it into a mould that's a similar temperature to that of the chocolate which is about 32 degrees. So I'll do one and then you can do one. So we're going to take the mould, we pop it under the spout and we put about half of the mould's worth of chocolate on and we use a palette knife just to take all the chocolate over the cavities like so. Scrape it off nice and clean. Now, into this, we're making a shell. That's the most important thing. And into that shell, we're going to pipe a filling called a ganache. Now, a ganache is a typical filling based on chocolate and fresh cream. But you, nowadays, people use things like water and, and wine and beer and all sorts of things. They use water now because they say it gives it a much clearer, cleaner flavour. So we use fresh cream because it's nicer, I like the calories. But what that does do is give us a much shorter shelf life. And all the chocolates that we make here have very short shelf life anyway because, you know, we, the tours that we do, people come in and no sooner have we made the chocolates than they go. So every 10 minutes we do demonstrations and of course all the chocolates that we make go out on the demonstration. So when a guest has a chocolate that's been made here, it's probably no more than about 10 minutes old. So it's as fresh as it can be. So what we're going to do, we've got chocolate in the mould. What we have done though now is we've incorporated a certain amount of air into that mould. So what we're going to do is to tap it. And then I'm going to turn it upside down over the vat. If, if you have air bubbles, what happens is an air bubble can burst, you're left with a hole in the shell and air can get in and obviously it starts to deteriorate. So we're just going to flip it over, tap the sides, we want to tap it just enough, we don't want to take all the chocolate out, but we don't want to make the shell too thin either, and then of course now, scrape it all off, like so, cleaning it as we go the best we can, and then what we're going to do is pop it upside down onto this glass fibre mat, and in doing so, what's going to happen now is, the effect of gravity is going to take the chocolate down the inside of the mould, it will collect at the bottom edge, and then it will 
just start to set. And before it sets fully, we can just take the mould again, scrape it back, and so we get a nice even shell thickness. And what we're looking for is something like that. So we've got a nice, a nice even shell. We've got that contraction, and that's ready for the filling. Now I've got some here that are already filled. So we're going to take a port and raspberry ganache. So this is fresh raspberry puree, a little bit of port and some milk chocolate. And it's been piped into the mould. We bring the cream up to the boil we add, and the, with the raspberry. We add a little bit of port at the end and we blend it with the milk chocolate. Let it cool to about 31 degrees and then we pipe it into the moulds. Allow it to set. And you can see there's nothing sticking up above the surface. These are dome moulds so they tend to move about in the mould a little. So then we're going to warm that mould surface again. And then this time we're going to do exactly the same process. So we're just going to pop some chocolate. Not as much this time because we're only sealing in the cavities. And then we're going to go straight across the mould. Like so. Try and keep your edges as clean as you can. Don't forget the ends. It's always the edge you can't see that we leave. And then we end up with chocolate all over the place. scraper again and straight across the top again. Now at this point we're going to pop them into the fridge briefly. Now we don't normally, and we tell guests this all the time, we don't normally keep chocolates in the fridge for very long because if you do, chocolate's hygroscopic so it attracts moisture. So not only does it attract moisture but it attra attracts smell, strong smells. So you've got things like cheese or meat, eggs or fish in there. Very quickly that's what the chocolate will taste of. And also the moisture will actually um, dissolve the sugar in the chocolate and then when it comes back to room temperature the moisture evaporates and the sugar recrystallizes and we get what we call sugar bloom which although isn't harmful it's not very pleasant it just spoils the appearance so I'm just going to pop this fridge behind me here into there and allow that to set here's one again in true blue Peter fashion we made a little earlier on so the idea is we should now just be able to flex the mold give it a tap and without too much effort, out come some nice, fresh, shiny chocolates. Would you like to try one? Yeah. <laughs>